Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. We are in the garden today. It is Sunday, January 30th. It's about 32 degrees outside, which is much better compared to some work we did for this project last Sunday. I think the temperature was like 12 degrees, but the real fill was in the single digits. So that was quite a rough build. Wanna sit by me? The build that I'm talking about is right behind us and it's called a cold frame. So for today's video, I'm going to talk about the purpose of a cold frame, what you can do with it, how it extends your growing season in the garden, and then also show you kind of how we built it. And then towards the end, we're actually going to put our first seeds in the cold frame. So a couple of things about materials for our cold frame. The top which you want to be translucent or clear is just a repurposed storm door. So we got this storm door from the ReStore for Habitat for Humanity from Champaign County. I absolutely loved shopping there, not only because um, they sell used goods, right? Like repurposed things, um, but also they prevent tons and tons, like literal tons of materials from going into the landfill. Um, and then of course, all the profits that they make are used to help build houses for our community members in need. What was also really cool is that they offered me a teacher discount, so yay. The door was originally $20 and I got 15% off, so that was pretty cool. We ended up finding a storm door that is 35 and a half inches by 80 inches, so that serves as the top of our cold frame. So we loosely based our build off of a plan found in this book. This book has been amazing. It's called The Year-Round Vegetable Gardener, and the author's name is Nikki Jabor. And so her husband actually has built her many cold frames, and they include their build in the appendix. So we loosely based our build off of what was available in the appendix of this book. The only difference is, is that their top, their clear translucent top is made out of, I don't know if I'm saying this right either, Lexan twin wall polycarbonate. So it's a different type of material. In, they suggest that it's stronger and because it has twin walls, it's able to retain heat more efficiently. Um, I suppose the reason I didn't go that route was because I love the idea of repurposing. And so that even though glass may not be as efficient as retaining heat, I still did the world a favor and repurposed some material instead of buying new. And speaking of repurposed materials, <laughs> Nora, <laughs> speaking of repurposed materials, all of the wood, well, vast majority of the wood is also repurposed from um, building our fence like two Octobers ago. We had all these left leftover fence pickets. So that's what we used uh, for the majority of the lumber in this project. So overall, this was a really, really inexpensive build. But like I said earlier, the day we chose to build it, which was last Sunday, it was freezing. And so it took, and it took a really long time, but it's worth it. So let me go ahead and show you how we built our cold frame. And I'm just gonna keep kind of talking about cold frames and how you can use them in your garden to extend your growing season. So first of all, what is a cold frame? As Nikki suggests in her book, in its most simple sense, it is a box with a clear top. Um, the purpose of having a clear or translucent top is to make sure that solar energy can be trapped during the colder months. So for example, if it's 32 degrees in the air here in zone 5B, central Illinois, I'm guessing it's going to be several degrees warmer inside my cold frame because it's acting like a little mini greenhouse just trapping that solar energy and what it does is is it takes the edge off of the the cold temperatures and it protects plants against the elements like snow and and ice and and the cold um, so that you can you can plant cold hardy plants way sooner in your season than you normally would so for example right now it's the last week of january i'm going to show you i'm going to plant some spinach and arugula in the cold frame today if i were planting directly into the ground or my other raised beds i would have to wait until the first week of march so you can see how much this cold frame is going to extend my growing season 
So a couple of features about the cold frame. First of all, we tried to make it portable just in case we wanted to move it so it's not anchored into the ground or anything. Um, some folks like to actually excavate their property where they're going to place their cold frame so that they get even more insulation and the cold frame is in the ground. I think that is a really cool look. We're just not ready to make that permanent of a decision yet. Um, you definitely want to make sure that your cold frame is south facing. So that's this way for us. Um, it's early mid afternoon. So the sun is over here and in the winter time, the sun just kind of comes just above the horizon and, and sets over here. So by facing it south and having the incline over here about three inches taller in the back than in the front, it really makes it more efficient. Um, for trapping that solar energy and warming up what's inside the frame. Another feature you wanna consider if you're building a cold frame is you wanna make sure you can vent it properly. Here in winter time, I will keep the door closed, but once it starts to warm up and I use it for different things like hardening off seedlings or planting other types of crops, I'm definitely going to want to vent this a little bit. And that just means that I'm going to go ahead and open up the storm door to so that it doesn't get too hot especially in the summer months i'm just going to keep it open for the whole summer and it's basically going to function like a third raised bed here in my garden for watering purposes once your plants are in there you're going to treat it the same as you would any raised bed and same thing with fertilizing this is all fresh garden soil never been used the nutrients have never been taxed yet so everything in here is good to go um, but I'm thinking maybe at the end of the season, I'll refresh the nutrients by adding some compost in there. I'm gonna treat pests and disease, knock on wood, you know, if I get any, like normal, I'll just keep a close eye. For me, this season, that's definitely a goal of mine, is to try to stay on top of controlling pests and diseases before they get out of control. Um, so like I said today, we're going to be sowing some seeds into the garden but later on in the springtime, I'm also gonna use this space to harden off seedlings. So like, I'm gonna start my tomatoes and my peppers and all the other things inside. But once I'm ready to get them out here, I can't just immediately bring them outside and expect them to survive. There needs to be a period of hardening off. And that just means they get to live outside for really short periods of time to kind of build up their tolerance to the elements outside and the cold frame acts as a really good place for hardening off our seedlings. The seeds I'm going to be direct sowing today include greens. So we're looking at some spinach and some arugula. And according to Nikki's book, I could also do carrots. I don't think I'm gonna do carrots today for two reasons. Um, the first is I already have some carrots in a raised bed over there, sure, the greens have died back because it's been so cold and they don't have the protection of the cold frame. Um, but I'm expecting the greens to come back in the springtime and the roots, which the taproot is what we actually eat as the carrot should be just fine underground overwintering. Um, but since my arugula and spinach has died in my unprotected raised bed, um, we're gonna go ahead and plant those in the cold frame today. Other things that will go in the cold frame throughout the spring, well, late winter and spring growing season includes lettuce, broccoli, cabbage, radish, and beets. And that is going to be sowed directly into the ground um, because we do have some garden soil in here. And like I said, this just offers um, a chance for us to be able to harvest things in February, in the late winter, early spring, just to get a head start. It's going to be so nice to have fresh greens from the garden, even when it's still kind of cold outside. So here we've got our seeds. We've got our garden marker, which I'm really excited about. This is supposed to last better outside um, compared to like a regular Sharpie. So um, this is the first day we're using our garden marker. Um, and then we just need some labels. Do you want to go grab some labels? It's on your toy toy chest over okay. there. Thanks. Ooh, the lid came off. All right, so I'm going to be practicing square foot gardening here in my cold frame. And that just means in one square foot, I can plant four arugula plants. When I move on to another square foot for spinach, I can plant nine spinach plants in one square foot.
express delivery. <laughs> Thank you. We need two. Okay, so for this one, can you write spinach? And then try to do it up here because we stick that part in the ground. Okay. And then for this one, can you please write arugula? Good, Mom. All right, good job. Now what the other one should say? Spinach and arugula. Oh, it smells so good. What smells so good? The soil. It's a little bit frozen in here, but still nothing compared to like the ground itself. Here is the <laughs> labels. labels. <laughs> Let me see. For the um, for the gold frame. Okay, perfect. One square foot for my four arugula plants, and then another square foot for nine spinach plants. And I think that's a good place to start. I survived last season on just one square foot of arugula and one square foot of spinach. So I think I'm going to do arugula here and spinach here. So arugula is four per square feet, so I'm just going to make, let me get this down a little bit. Man, this is dry. We're going to have to wa water this big time. One, two, three, four, and I'll sprinkle about two seeds in each well. Oh, those are baby seeds. Oh, those are so tiny. Okay, so I'm going to have to be careful here. One, two. One, two. How many one, are you planting two. in each? One, two. two. I'm going to do two. Yeah. Okay, so next I'm going to do some spinach. And because you can do nine plants of spinach per square feet, I'm just gonna real quick make nine wells. So just a three by three grid. Two, three, three, two, three, perfect. Okay, this is half an inch deep. And I'm also going to do two per cell to increase the chances of at least having one germinate per cell. And then worst case scenario, if both germinate, I just have to, um, the process is called thinning. So if the, both of them germinate, I'm going to take a look at both of them, both of the seedlings, and then just decide which one looks healthier and stronger, stronger and then just snip off the other one at the stem. You don't want to pull them out like the roots and everything because it could disturb the roots of the seedling that you've left in. All right, get my extra seeds back in this packet. There's a lot of spinach seeds in here. That's cool. Maybe I'll end up doing more square feet than I expected. I'm going to cover up these holes. This garden soil is extremely dry. So even though our hose is turned off, for the winter season, I still need to water. So I'm gonna go ahead and go inside and fill up a, um, a watering can and get some water in here. Oh, labels. Okay, let's go fill up a watering container. So I'm just going to give it a spray first just to keep the seeds from being dislodged into their cells because I strategically placed them based on the square foot gardening method. So this is just making sure those can settle in okay. All right, you want to give it a couple sprays? Yes. And then I dug up and filled up my watering can. That's okay, I will. So I'm just going to...
just really soak this in because this soil was dry. Oh, look at that steam. <laughs> really muddy. Doesn't it look really muddy? Yeah, but we want it to be nice and wet. And then another nice thing about a, the cold frame too is that it'll retain this moisture really nicely. So I'm still going to come out and check on the moisture because we don't want to let it dry out. I don't know, maybe I'll set an alarm on my phone for like just kind of once a week just making sure that these stay moist and don't dry out because that'll lessen the chances of them actually germinating. I get to be patient with these seedlings. Um, normally they would germinate or sprout in a couple of days um, if I were to plant them in like March. But because I'm planting them in the cold frame and they're dealing with the elements, it might take a little bit longer. So I just get to be patient that's okay. I got to be patient for those celery seeds and um, as the, seed, as the seed packet promised, they germinated three weeks later. Good, get your energy out. <laughs> so I think that's it, everybody. So we showed you how we built our cold frame, and then we did our first sewing into the cold frame. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll probably leave this watering can in here there's still a little bit of water in it and then if we once we get the door closed it'll be insulated enough so hopefully it doesn't freeze um, just kind of make it easier for me next time when it's time to water so let's get this closed up and let's get inside and watch some football thank you so much for watching this video if you want to support my work you can subscribe to my channel and share my videos to anyone who you think would be interested thank you so much have a great rest of your day bye <laughs> Come and say bye.